Good morning class, this is Caleb Pelagi with a uh, P-SPICE tutorial on how to build the emitter follower circuit for EEC-315 and EEC-316 Electronics Lab and Electronic Devices Lab at Cleveland State University. Um, this, this was recorded in spring of 2022. Um, we're going to be doing this lab here, the common collector or emitter follower amplifier. Um, we're going to just be doing the pre-lab assignment in P-SPICE. Um, I'm going to show you how to build the circuit. Um, I'm going to have it modified slightly, so the waveform you receive at the end is not going to match exactly what you should get, but it should give you some good guidance on what to expect and help you get through the P-SPICE part of this experiment. So let's get started. Um, so first, I have a brand new project here. Um, all, as always, make sure to create a new project, so I'm going to run you through this process just for a quick review. We're going to go to Project. You're going to create a name here, so I'm just going to put in emitter follower uh, amplifier. And make sure, always make sure it's a P-SPICE analog or mixed AD. If it is in schematic mode when you create the new project, you won't actually be able to simulate it. Um, so you're just going to hit OK. And just create a blank project. It's trying to create it off of a sample project I have uh, done previously. So just click OK. And we're going to move to actually building the circuit. So the first thing we're going to need to do is actually get the P-SPICE component for our transistor. So in order to do that, you're going to go to the P-SPICE menu. Uh, sorry, the place menu. And you're going to go down to the P-SPICE component le line. And you're going to go down to search. And when you're in search, you can just type in the um, 2N3904 as shown in the lab manual and you can just double click this first one and the component will uh, appear click on the screen and you'll place Q1 which is our first transistor um, next you're going to want to actually place the component so um, what you're going to want to do we're going to start by placing all of our resistors just so we can set up the biasing for it so we're going to begin by placing a piece by component and once in this menu you can actually just click R and it'll come up with a um, it'll come up with a resistor. Uh, to rotate the part just use control R um, and then you can just place the part right about here for the pull up resistor and we'll also place our pull down resistor as well as our load resistor and that's going to take care of all the resistors we need to place. We'll come back and worry about the values later but for now we're just going to place the components. Um, next we're going to go through I'm going to press C for capacitor. Now I have a capacitor here. And we're going to place one on the base and the other in series with our load. And that should take care of it. And now we're going to go back to the place menu. And we're going to grab our P spice grounds. Um, we're going to need to place five of them actually. So I'm going to start by placing one here, one here, one here placing one here in advance of placing the source and the other one I'm going to put up here just to prepare for placing the um, DC source we're going to place there. Next we're going to go to the place menu and we're going to click P spice component. We're going to go down to the source menu. We're going to go to voltage sources and we're first going to select a, uh, a DC source and we're going to place that right here. Make sure the polarity is right. I'm going to place that source there. And then we're going to go over to the place menu again. This time we're going to place our AC source, but it's not really an AC source. It's going to be a sine source right there. So just to show you again, because I clicked a little fast, you go to place, P spice component, down to source, voltage sources, and then you'll click the sine option, which is the uh, fourth option from the top. Um, we use that in this lab as a source. If you were to select an AC source, the frequency um, could be used to vary, and you can use that actually to generate um, Bode plots, uh, which you'll learn more about in electronics too, if you're taking that now, as well as controls. Um, but for now, we're going to use a sine source and then a DC source for the battery, just as a quick, just in case you missed that because I clicked a little fast. Um, so next I'm going to X out of all those menus and we're going to place the wires for everything. So in order to connect everything up, 
You're going to just hit W to place the wire, and you'll click, and we're just going to start connecting any, everything. So i um, just going to connect the whole circuit up here. Um, So that should match the emitter follower circuit. And just so you guys can see that it matches our uh, the lab manual. I'm going to pull up. I'm going to close that window there. Um, zoom in here. And you should be able to see that this matches everything we have on the other menu here. So we have our sign source, our capacitor, our two resistors uh, for biasing. We have our DC source as well as these two resistors. Now, um, as mentioned earlier, I'm not going to build, I'm not going to select the component values to exactly match what's in your lab. Just so you can't screenshot this and try to submit that. Um, but I will help you sit, get everything set up. So we're going to start by double clicking on our source. We're going to go here and we're going to set it up as the following. So first you're going to want to set your frequency to 5,000. So just go to the frequency line here type in 5000 and that'll give you the 5 kilohertz that it asks for. We already have this set for sign but um, just to make sure it doesn't treat it as an AC source you hit 0 and that turns it off as an AC source. Um, we also need to hit the uh, amplitude which is down at the bottom here and we're going to set this as 0 0.1 because on the other one um, our input is 0 0.2 peak to peak. So in order to match that source, it needs to be 0 0.1 because it's measuring the amplitude rather than the peak to peak voltage. P spice treats V amplitude as the true amplitude, not the peak to peak voltage. Um, peak to peak is 0 0.2, the actual amplitude is 0 0.1. Um, v off is gonna be set to zero, which turns on our source. And you can just hit um, Control S to save that and then move right on over back to our page and you'll see all of our settings got copied right into our source and now it's all labeled. Um, next we're gonna go over here to the DC source and we're gonna do the exact same thing. This one's a lot easier. Just double click the DC line, delete the zero, replace that with a nine volts, hit control S to save and then move back over and you're back here at the source. You're back here at our document. You can see that our source has been changed to nine volts. Uh, next, we're going to go through, I'm going to re-bias this circuit here. So, uh, now that that's all configured, it's just a matter of selecting values. So, this is going to be 2.2 U for micro. Um, this is going to be 100 U for micro. Um, in the document, they actually draw electrolytic capacitors. You don't have to use them. Um, I've run all these simulations without electrolytic capacitors, and... Um, the values are fine. Now, it's not going to be as no, as accurate as what you're going to receive in the lab, but it's still very similar. If you wanted to place an electrolytic capacitor, you can go to um, the search menu and you would go to your passive components. Go to capacitor, general purpose, and if you pull um, the C elect, double click and you should have an electrolytic capacitor. Um, just for your reference, I'll actually I'll put these in here, swap them out, put them in just so you have uh, place the part. Just hit Control R twice to rotate. Except it's not doing that. So to manually click, rotate, rotate, and I'm just going to drag this guy in here. And we're going to set this value to 2.2 microfarads. This one's going to be 100 microfarads. This value here is going to be 22k. This one here is going to be 
uh, this in your document this should be set to 27k for the purposes of mine I'm setting this to 10k so it's not your waveforms are not going to match nor is this schematic so you cannot copy this and use this in your pre-lab I set it right here and now you cannot put this in your pre-lab you have to re-simulate this on your own because the display I'm going to get is going to vary slightly from what you get in lab um, this value here in your simulation is a 1k but in mine it's going to be 50k and I'm going to leave the load resistor as 1K because that does match in what you guys are going to have in your, um, in your simulation. So if I hit save here and save the project here just so if something crashes, don't lose it. Everything's configured right here. So we have our AC source is set correctly. We have all of our capacitors set up. We have our 1K resistor here, 50K resistor here, 10K here, 22K here. 9 volt source here and of course we have our transistor. Um, next we got to create the simulation profile so we're gonna go to new simulation and I always call them sim so you can just hit sim sim create and now you get the simulation settings. Um, in this case it's just gonna be a transient analysis so you're gonna click the leave this analysis type as time domain transient and we're gonna set the run to time to a little longer than what you would normally set it to than the default so this has as a thousand nanoseconds which is um, one microsecond which you won't even see this uh, transistor even start up yet so you're gonna want to set this to about two milliseconds 2m and then put the maximum step size as 1u um, that just helps get a pretty nice resolution on the waveform output it doesn't really matter whether you set it to 1U, 1N, but I found that 1 microsecond, 1U, is a um, is a good way to get a nice high resolution without losing 5 minutes to, for the simulation running. Um, so you can hit Apply, and then OK. And you're just going to hit the Run Piece by Sim here. And it's going to be blank because I didn't place any probes. Um, so really fast, just so you guys can see. Uh, the manual asks us to build figure 8.1 in P-SPICE. Make sure the peak-to-peak -peak voltage for both input and output waveforms match what they should be. Um, and then it wants us to determine the phase relationship between the input and output waveforms. So we're going to put in V in is going to be this probe here. V out is going to be this probe here. You always probe here for your output right, right above the load. And you probe right here at the source probe your input. So now if I open up the simulation here, oh, I need to rerun it really fast, so let me just hit run. Uh, probes are placed, and this might be running a different simulation. Give me one second. Close. Close. Yeah, I was placing the probes in the wrong one. Sorry, guys. Um, so I'm going to try this once again. We're just going to place one probe here, one probe here. So input, output, same deal. We're going to hit play. And now the waveform should show up. Oh. Uh, very interesting. Okay, well, I can show you a little different way to uh, to add the different measurements we want. So if we go to Trace, we can hit Add Trace, and we can actually select each of the nodes here. So we're going to do V. If we go through here, we can see the voltage at R4 pin 1, which is going to be this pin here. So we can go R4 pin 1 and hit OK. I might need to swap that out for a different one. My bad, guys. Trace. We're going to add trace. R4 v, uh, v R2. Let's see. There you go. That's pin 2. Um, it's going to vary depending on how you have uh, yours configured. But there is the... Um, this is the waveform output. And so we have a probe placed right here. Um, 
I just had to manually place it because there's some some weird connection between um, uh, the simulation and the actual like schematic entry page. Um, and if I go to add trace here, I can go to our voltage source, which would be um, I can measure the V1 uh, V2 plus, and just make sure it says V2 plus here. That's the actual waveform it's pulling. So the blue is going to be your source and the red is your load. Now as I mentioned earlier this does not match what you guys actually have um, on your this waveform looks similar to what you should get but it's not the same. In your waveform you would actually expect this to be about a gain of one um, the circuit they have the, the circuit diagram in the lab manual has a gain of about one. Um, in this, the gain is uh, um, much less. So our outputs the red, our inputs the blue. As you can see, the peak to peak input voltage, as we as asked for in the manual, it asks for um, peak to peak input voltage should be 0 0.2 volts, and from peak to peak, it's 0 0.2 volts. Our peak is at 100. Our, uh, our uh, valley is at negative 100 millivolts, so it's 200 millivolts peak to peak. And we have a gain, and then the, um, the output waveform is about, um, it has an amplitude of about 75 millivolts. Um, so th from there, we could actually recalculate our gain if we want. Um, but I'm not going to do that here. That's for you guys to figure out in your um, in your uh, pre-lab. I'm not going to do the math for you. Um, now, um, you can populate these values here. You guys should have all of the equations for this. Um, they're right here on this page. So if we were to calculate the voltage gain from base to emitter, we would just take the maximum value maximum value and you can calculate it for all of this or you can even just use these resistor values here and populate them all into um, all into the equations so if I uh, let me just do that and do this we can um, you can go through for the gain you can either calculate it using the resistor values or you can use that V out and V in that we just got from our waveforms um, and all of this should be pretty straightforward to calculate these values Please calculate these before you come to class. If you're running any issues, feel free to email me. Um, this video will be available on YouTube for the whole class to use to to, to view. And um, if you have any questions, once again, feel free to email me or the other TA. Um, this is Caleb Pelagi. Uh, I just this this video is over the um, uh, not common emitter the common collector or emitter follower amplifier. Um, it follows, shows you how to draw the figure 8-1 schematic diagram in P-SPICE, run the simulation, and get the output. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the values are different. Do not just copy these values and submit it. Um, you're gonna, But you're gonna wanna bring these waveforms to class. That way, when you hook it up to the oscilloscope, you know exactly what to expect. If you, any of your probes are damaged, or if you're, um, or someone let the white smoke out of your transistor, you'll be able to figure that out really quickly because you have all of your expected results pre-calculated. So pre-calculate everything before you go to class, run the simulation, bring the waveforms and your values to class so you know exactly what to expect. Um, all right, this is Kale Pelagi signing off for this week's video for P-SPICE. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you.